Hi everybody, Caleb with SVSI here, and today we're going to talk about our hardware controllers, the N8000 series. Available in three varieties, the N8001, which is what we'll be working with today, the N8002, and our enterprise level N8012. The setup for all three devices is nearly identical, but for today's video we're going to focus on the N8001. The N8001 is capable of controlling up to 50 SVSI devices and it allows for five users to be created to access this unit. Once you've unboxed the unit, it comes with its own power supply. So we're going to hook up the power supply, get power going to it. And then we need to get it plugged into the same network. Okay, so we've got our controller hooked up to the network. Our computer is hooked up to the network as well. We're going to open a web browser and enter in the default IP address of the controller, which for all controllers is 192.168.1.99. So I'm going to enter that in. And then I'm presented with the login page for the controller. The default username is admin in lowercase, and the default password is password in lowercase. Got that entered in. I'm going to go ahead and log in now. So this is basically the home page of the controller. It's got the two devices that I have connected to my network that show in the matrix view. Let's talk about how to set up the unit's IP address. Let's say you need to change it from 192 to something different. By going over the admin tab, I can come down here to conductor N8001 IP addresses. When I click on here, you can see that I have the ability to assign two different IP addresses to this unit. This can be most helpful if I've got different devices and different subnets that I need to communicate with. We don't need to change it for our application, so I'm going to leave this screen alone. By far the most common use for our controllers is using it to create scripts to control external devices. So let's talk a little bit about scripts. The first thing I want to do is go under tasks and then to scripts. When I click on here I'm taken to our script maker page. Now this is not programming, this is simple configuration. As you can see it's all done through drop down menus. So when I select my drop down menu let's just create a script to switch a video source from one to another. I'll select the drop-down menu and I look under here for encoder and decoder commands. And what I want to do is switch video streams. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to first choose the decoder or the receiver that I want to switch streams. In this case I only have one to choose from, but if I had multiple devices I would select the appropriate device. Then I'm going to choose the source that I want it to subscribe to. Again, with a single source it's only one to choose from, but I'll choose this one anyway. Then I click Add. That's it. My script is now created. Now I can stack multiple commands inside of a single script. Think of it like a macro. So if I wanted to add a serial command in here uh, to turn on my monitor, I would choose the action, go down to encoder decoder commands, and then serial command. Choose the decoder that I want to issue that command, and then any saved serial commands I would select from there. Click Add and now I've got my serial command in there. So that's step one in creating a, a script. One thing that you can do in addition to this is upload an image to be associated with that script. This will be talked about later in our panel, panel editor sequence. But if I go down here to where it says use custom image, I select that radio button, click on new image, and I would navigate to the image on my computer that I want to be associated with that script. Then I save it, and I might give the option to create a name for this script. So we'll call this SVSI Demonstration. I click OK, and my script is now saved. So it doesn't take very long. I'm not hand jamming code. All I'm doing is a little bit of simple configuration. So you've seen how easy it is to create a script. Let me show you how easy it is to create a new user. Oftentimes when you have a controller in place, you're wanting varying levels of access based on the user credentials provided. The most common application of this is you have an IT admin. When he logs into the controller, or, or your installer in this case, you want him to have access to every device that's located in the controller. 
but maybe the teacher in her classroom doesn't need access to wall devices, just the ones that she's going to be working with. So let me show you how to add a user. We're going to go over admin and then come down to users and groups. To create a new user, we're going to have the radio button selected on user and type in the user's name. We'll call this user Steve. We're going to select whether Steve is an administrator, if he has the ability to activate EMCast, edit local play, or upload local play images. Also here, we have the ability to force this user to a particular panel that we've created with Panel Editor, uh, instead of being presented with the matrix view. So we're going to give Steve a password. We're going to confirm that password. And then we can enter in Steve's email address, if he has one to add him to the email notification section of controller's capabilities. Once we've done that, we click Add. That's it. We've created a new user. So these are two of the numerous capabilities of our N8000 series of controllers. For more information, please contact the factory at 256-461-7143.